Now, I've talked about it a couple times on this channel that September is traditionally the most volatile month for the stock market. Last year, September, we had a major correction. We had a 10% correction in the major indices in the stock market. And people kind of freaked out. People tend to freak out when that kind of stuff happens. Personally, I see those opportunities as opportunities, buying opportunities. And I tend to load up on stocks when things crash i tend to add during those times now i want to talk about the the broader market today um and uh and some fears of stagflation and inflation and things like that um and then some news from uh from the fed where uh powell actually orders an ethics review um based on some major purchases that the fed presidents made last year so we're going to talk about all of that in this video so stick around Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. I'm Richard Allen. If you aren't subscribed already, please go ahead and do that. I make videos here every day on the Tip Ranks YouTube channel and I would love to have you be part of the journey. Today we're going to talk about the broader market because you probably see a, a lot of different videos out there right now um, just saying, look, the crash is coming, the crash is imminent. It happens every week from some of the major financial YouTubers. Now, I don't think the broader market is crashing anytime soon. However, September is traditionally a pretty volatile month in the stock market, but today we had news that consumer spending actually went up a little more than was expected, and that was a really, really good sign. So we're gonna talk about some of those numbers. We're also gonna talk about the term stagflation because you hear that a lot probably if you watch any sort of videos about personal finance and the stock market on YouTube, you probably hear about stagflation. If you watch the news, that kind of thing as well. And then uh, towards the end of this video, we're going to talk about some uh, some stuff going on with the Fed right now and Jerome Powell ordering some ethics reviews based on some major, major purchases and selling uh, that was happening last year um, from some of the Fed presidents. So we're gonna talk about that as well. But um, if you hear the term stagflation, what that means is it's inflation coupled with lower economic growth. So the economy's going down, but inflation is going up. That's a kind of a double whammy, right? So things are getting more expensive, but people aren't making as much money essentially, right? Or people aren't producing as much. So it, that's, a, that's a double whammy in the economy. That's not a great thing. Now, those fears actually subsided a little bit today because Wall Street expected a 0.8% decline, actually an actual decline in uh, consumer spending, but there was a 0.7% increase in consumer spending so the opposite expectation actually happened and that's a good swing in the right direction now if we take a peek at the numbers okay excluding volatile auto sales which are absolutely crazy i was actually just at the dealership uh today um cr crazy crazy time to be buying a car probably won't be doing it um but retail sales overall rose by 1.8 percent okay well ahead of the 0.1 percent that was expected so there's a retail sales overall okay these numbers confirmed a significant turnaround from july when retail sales dropped 1.8 percent easing concerns of the u.s economy heading into stagflation again stagflation is a situation of higher inflation combined with lower economic growth now if we dig into these numbers a little bit more okay you'll see that sales gain from non-store retailers were 5.3 percent furniture up 3.7 percent i have a funny story about just buying a couch that I'll tell you in a second. General merchandise stores, 3.5% up. Food and beverages, 1.8%. And building materials, 0.9%. So I just bought a couch the other day, um, on Monday. Got delivered today, actually. And uh, the the it wasn't like wrapped or anything. And, I, and we didn't, it wasn't a cheap couch by any means. It was this fancy, it has wireless charging for phones and moves around and does all this fancy stuff. And, 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 uh, I, I watch these guys bring it in through my door and it's caught on the door jam and on two sides of the leather. And I was like, guys, what are you, come on, you're going to scratch it. Normally, I'm a pretty chill dude, um, but uh, the, I wasn't very chill this morning. And I was like, yeah. they're like, no, it's fine. And then, of course, it, 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 it like I watched it skip across the door jam and scratch up a ton. And I was like, oh, come on. So uh, it, it was on the bottom. So not a big deal. We're going to order a replacement. But... Um, 
I'm shopping for furniture right now. There's a lot of great deals on furniture right now. Um, so I can attest to this 3.7% jump. Yeah, the, the furniture stores seem pretty busy right now, but they're seeing some of these same constraints in certain things, certain uh, sectors of their business as well as, you know, auto sales and things like that with these chip shortages and different shortages on building materials and wood and marble and a lot of, a lot of different kind of stuff. Um, so the impact overall, um, the, the biggest impacts are on auto sales um, and sporting goods um, as well as still crazy because people are stuck in home at, at home inside being scared of like the delta variant and stuff like that so sporting goods tends to increase and and people buy more of that to try to work out and keep in shape at home uh, because they're not going to the gym as often so um, that's why sporting goods are up like crazy and with vehicles it's the chip shortages um, and that are really uh, like I, again i was just at the dealership today it, 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 he said normally we have 400 new cars on the lot we have 40 right now. Normally, we have 1,200 used vehicles on the lot. We only have a couple hundred. Um, so that's staggering. It's a staggering statistic. And they're selling vehicles at MSRP. No discounts, no nothing, because people are buying them. They need vehicles. Um, and I was looking to trade in and buy something a little bit bigger, but I, I probably won't because values of vehicles, they're still trying to lowball your trade in, but the values of vehicles are still super, super, super high right now, like really, really high. Um, we looked at statistics uh, a couple times on this channel and we're talking, you know, like 50% higher than they were a year ago uh, this time. So crazy, crazy uh, price action on some of these, um, some of these used vehicle prices, just mad. So um, a lot of, a lot of this uh, with inflation fears, um, it's really hitting certain sectors of the economy, but it seems like people aren't afraid to spend money right now. So that's why we aren't seeing stagflation as much, right? And that, that seems to be a, a, a really good thing. So the major indices are still near all-time highs, right? Even though if we take a peek at where the major indices were today, 0.16% uh, down for the S&P, 0.18% down for the Dow Jones, so pretty much the same deal there. The NASDAQ was slightly up, up over 15,500 points. Um, so the NASDAQ tech sector is doing really, really well right now. Um, the major indices are really close to all-time highs. They're maybe 100 points away, so not far at all. Um, so it, it, the overall economy is doing pretty well, and I think that's because people aren't afraid to spend money right now, um, which is which is a good thing. And, and that's probably partially because a lot of people um, have some extra savings. It, savings went up by a, a lot, 15 to 20 percent overall um, across the board for the uh, the median household income. So that was a really good thing to see during the pandemic. People were spending less in money, but now there's this pent up demand to get out there and spend money. I think this is going to be a killer Christmas season um, for retail sales, uh, but we'll, we'll see. I could be I could be wrong. I think people are going to be spending way more money than they than they did last year for sure. Um, let's jump over. Let's talk about the Fed. So Powell orders ethics review after Fed presidents disclosed multi-million dollar investments. Now, we're talking investments in the millions of dollars. Sounds like uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren sent 12 letters to the Fed's regional bank presidents demanding stricter ethics from the nation's top central bank officials. If we scroll down and actually look, because a lot of this is public record when you sell so much. If you look up here at Boston Fed, Eric Rosenberg uh, held stakes in four real estate investment trusts and several purchases and sales of similar property owning vehicles, according to filings. He also held stock in Pfizer, Chevron, and AT&T. His investments were in the tens, of tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but essentially what Elizabeth Warren is saying is uh, she's saying... Um, as the Fed took extraordinary actions to address the risks to the economy, the banking and financial systems from the COVID-19 pandemic, you and your colleague, Eric Rosengren, made extensive trades in individual stocks and real estate investment trust. So they're looking because, look, when, when Powell comes out and speaks or any of the Fed presidents come out and speak, they move the markets, right? They 100% they move the markets every single time they speak every single time because the economy is really driven based on on what the fed is doing right um so when there there can be somewhat of a conflict of interest right if they 
If they know they're going to make a statement a couple days uh, before that, they can decide to buy or sell or something if they know based on what they're going to say the market's going to move. It's a little bit of a conflict of interest here. So um, it, the Senator Warren is saying, look, we need stricter rules. We need stricter guidelines based on what you can and can't do when you're a Fed president. Um, and and uh, it looks like Powell is on board with uh, doing some sort of review. I don't know what will change. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. Do you think the Fed president should be able to say whatever the heck they want? Uh, while simultaneously potentially, um, you know, moving the markets, manipulating the markets a little bit. I don't know. I, I think it's um, it's a it's a slippery slope for sure. Um, so let me know how you guys feel about that. Let me know how you guys feel about the broader market. Are you guys spending more money? Are you buying furniture like me? Are, are, is it getting scratched when it's being brought into your house? Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> they're replacing it, so it's not a big deal. But um, guys, thank you so much for joining me for another video. I wanted to do a video on just the broader market uh, to kind of get a feel for what's going on right now because you're probably seeing, uh, honestly, a lot of clickbaity kind of stuff. Oh, the market's crashing, um, and uh, I don't think it is anytime soon, but it, I certainly could be wrong. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for another video. As always, if you aren't subscribed already, please go ahead and do that, and I'll see you in the next one.